Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our webinars. This time, a completely different topic. It's not multi-channel, it's not AVR, it's not about video or HDMI. We are just going back to hi-fi, back to our roots to two-channel audio. And um, this time, I'm pretty happy to introduce to you our new flagship DNP 2000NE uh, media streamer. So I have with me, as uh, usual, my friend Frederick. Hello, good afternoon. Hi, Oliver. Good to be back. It's been a while. Yeah, exactly. Have have been a few weeks. Uh, in the back, uh, I have Kevin and Roland. As you know, they are my guys in for for the techniques. They will help uh, switching all the cameras and uh, ensuring that you will get my sound uh, clear, uh, loud and clear. And um, yeah, for for the ones uh, which are joining for the first time, welcome. Uh, the agenda is actually that I'm going to talk about uh, slightly uh, our uh, Denon philosophy and direction strategy we follow. Then I will show you some of the connected Hi-Fi solutions we have, and then we are going to make a deep dive into the DMP 2000NE. First about the functionality, and then build quality and the technical uh, uh, specialities of this product. Uh, which makes it a nice uh, all-in-one all solution uh, to suit actually all kind of hi-fi systems with the capabilities of audio streaming from the network, from the music services, but also from your TV screen. And then, uh, yeah, we will finish off with a question and answer. Roughly, I would say, uh, 40, 45 minutes of presentation from my side before we switch over to the Q&A. So let's uh, start. Um, Brand mission of Denon. Let me just quickly repeat uh, what we are after. Of course, it's all about um, yeah um, the experience we want to give to our customers uh, to en enrich their life, the living with good audio quality, with good sound, and that's the Denon signature and sound, which of course we always have uh, as number one in our brand mission because that's uh, where where we are coming from, where our DNA is, and uh, that's what you expect from from a Denon product, the Denon sound signature. That's, of course, what we always have uh, on number one. Then we're doing innovations. Uh, we're not just happy with what we achieved and try to keep it. Now we always want to go one step further and uh, really get you the latest technologies, connectivities, uh, feature set into our products, new uh, ship technologies, uh, new components, just to make uh, the, the successor products, the new product, always a step better than the former one. Then we do technology with a purpose. We are just uh, not putting in features, 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 just to have a, a checkbox on, on the paper, but uh, we put in the technology we um, think can enrich the life of the customer. Then human design, usability, technology. That's of course uh, where the operation of the product uh, should be very simple so that uh, actually every kid can operate it and can enjoy the music. Um, because we are, with all the functionalities and possibilities we have nowadays, it can get very complex. And then, of course, we uh, always aim to, to be a global leader. Uh, we are for sure in AVRs, uh, where we are the number one. Uh, but uh, we also uh, don't have to hide in the hi-fi uh, segment. Because also here we do have quite a big uh, portfolio of nice solutions for the customer. And that's actually where I'm going to start with. Uh, uh, on the next slide. So connected hi-fi solutions. Uh, just a very quick run through of uh, the different uh, offers we have from the entry to the upper class uh, of the lineup uh, to really suit all the different, let's say, customer needs or uh, also the customer uh, um, money, what they are able to spend the budget actually. So we have different solutions for different type of budgets and also different feature sets. I would say the most uh, versatile solution in our lineup having a, connect a connectivity uh, to it is the DRA800H, which is a network streamer, a receiver, means it's stereo, but it also supports AM, FM, uh, DAB radio and it has HDMI switching. So you can make it a nice centerpiece of your home entertainment connected to your TV, uh, but just uh, using stereo speaker setup. So very easy to operate, even with tone control buttons like you know it from a yeah, standard amplifier having bass, treble, and balance uh, directly accessible. 
Then the entry solution for, for streaming is actually the PMA600 together with the DCD600 and E uh, amplifier and CD player, very conventional. However, the amplifier already supports Bluetooth streaming. So it's very easy to connect your smart device and stream all the contents you have on your phone directly to the amplifier to enjoy it. Yeah. On top of it, it also has digital connectivity, optical and coaxial, so you can also connect your TV via these interfaces. So also here, very easy entry into the hi-fi, into the streaming category. More advanced, it goes with the PMA900 HNE and the DCD900 NE. Here, the amplifier features, in addition, uh, the HEOS network connectivity. And you can also see it has a display on the front where you can see what kind of uh, input is selected and uh, what kind of stream is actually running through the product. So here, HEOS technology is already integrated into the amplifier. So it's, um, in this way, a one-box solution. For your legacy CDs, you can add the DCD900 uh, easily and you have a very, very nice uh, capable system in the upper mid-range of the hi-fi category of our portfolio. The next step up, that's uh, where we already go into the, uh, let's say, higher quality uh, area where we come with the PMA1700 and the DCD1700. Both uh, are, yeah, let's say, more conventional products. The PMA does have uh, um, digital connectivity already. However, there's no network uh, built in. Now, with the DNP 2000 NE, we have the possibility to make this system, the PMA 1700, DCD 1700, connected by adding the DNP 2000 NE. And, and we do get a very nice upper range hi fi solution, which also supports, of course, the duck mode, which means you can directly connect your computer to it and stream from your media uh, server uh, on your computer natively to the amplifier or to the DNP, both possible. And then uh, the upper class, uh, the premium range hi-fi solution uh, in the uh, current portfolio then is of course a PMA A110, our anniversary model on the left-hand side shown with the DCD A110 and combined with the DNP 2000 NE. Because, you know, the uh, anniversary models have been in a very special color version, the graphite silver. And we decided that, uh, especially for our loyal customer who bought these anniversary models, uh, we need to bring also the DMP 2000 NE as a fitting product to the system. So we decided to even bring uh, a third color uh, to, into the portfolio. So that means beside the premium silver and the black, we also do have the um, graphite silver. And I'm now going to ask uh, Roland quickly to just uh, change the camera to show you the um, yeah the, the products in real life because uh, we also set it up here. Uh, you can see nicely the combination of the PMA A110 with the DMP2000 and the graphite silver. So a very nice sophisticated uh, premium range hi-fi solution. Uh, here one more time, uh, the overview of the lineup. I'm just uh, showing this one here now to, to give you on one slide the full overview that you can see that we really have different solution for different price classes and different customers, uh, customer needs. But uh, it's not only possible to combine this DMP2000 and E to the products I just showed, but also we have a lot of products in the market already bought by the customers like the PMA 2500 NE or the PMA 2020, PMA 1600, 1520. So all these uh, amplifiers plus the fitting CD player, of course, nicely can also be combined with the DNP 2000 NE. So it's very valid to, let's say, check your customer base and uh, get in contact with the customers who actually bought already these products in the past and let them know, hey, now we have a nice uh, streaming solution for you. Would you like to come in and listen to it? Check it out. Yeah, but you can also combine it, of course, to uh, other brands like I'm, I'm pictured here, now the PM10 and PM12 SE of Morant. So it's also a good streaming solution uh, for, for third-party brands. So then let's check into the DMP 2000 and more into the technical training to really highlight or let you know why this product is so so good and can be combined to any solution uh, of hi-fi system we have in the market right now. 
So um, I'm just going to take the three top uh, points here. What was our uh, intention when designing the, the DMP 2000 ME? First of all, bring modern music streaming and HDMI connectivity to the DEN and hi-fi range. Yeah, so I, as I just showed you in the different combinations, uh, we were lacking the streaming capabilities on the upper class, especially uh, in our lineup, and that's where actually the DMP 2000 e fits perfectly in. We have all the network capability with the HEOS built-in um, network streaming, so you can access all the music streaming services, you can access your music stored on, the, on a NAS drive, and we have the easy integration of the TV audio by HDMI, and not only by the ARC, so that you can uh, audio return channel, get your sound back from your TV, amplified by um, the DMP2000 uh, slash uh, the connected amplifier, but it's also possible to use CEC uh, to control actually with your TV remote the amplifier. So, but I will come to, back to this one later. Um, as you can see, product is made in Shirakawa, Japan, in our own factory. And as explained, we do have three color options. Um, the silver and uh, or the premium silver and the black are slightly cheaper than the graphite silver one, uh, just because the graphite silver one is uh, harder to produce. So, uh, and um, yeah, and the quantity is uh, more limited. So we had to slightly increase the price so that you know where the difference is coming from. On the feature side, I'm not going to read it out here now because it's coming in the next slides anyhow. So uh, talking about uh, yeah, the perfect centerpiece, as you can see, um, the, the DNP2000 actually connects everything uh, you can imagine when it comes to network and the streaming uh, 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 area. So you have um, the HEROS connectivity, which of course brings you also AirPlay and Bluetooth. Um, but you can access the music on your NAS drive. You have your USB-A connectivity. Uh, that's all covered by uh, the HEOS um, module in the product itself. Then we have, uh, as a standard, the optical and coaxial digital inputs. So you can make use of the high quality uh, AS32 processing and the DA conversion area and the output stage of the DMP. Uh, to uh, amplify the sound quality of your connected devices. Um, you have the HDMI uh, ARC and you have the USB DAC functionality. Yeah, so that you directly can stream from your computer, uh, like using, for example, Rune or uh, J River as a media player and natively stream your music. You're all connected to an amplifier. To the amplifier, of course, you have the CD player and a nice pair of speakers and a turntable hooked up. So it's really a nice centerpiece for all your digital media. Yeah, this uh, actually is covering um, the HEOS capabilities with all the music services and uh, the streaming from AirPlay and uh, Bluetooth. And of course, you also have voice control with uh, Alexa and Siri. So talking about connectivity, uh, here a shot from, from the rear of the product. You can see uh, all the digital inputs and digital outputs as well, the network connectivity, uh, the HDMI, and as well the uh, IR control bus, which actually helps to talk or let uh, the, the DNP talk to the connected amplifier for control. Um, on the right-hand side, the picture is an inner, internal shot of the USB-B interface, so that's the XMOS chip. And this one does support uh, resolutions up to 384 kHz, 32 bit, or DSD 11.2 natively. Yeah, so, natively means actually that the DMP takes over the clock signal uh, and controls the connected PC with the USB B dock. Looking to HDMI, uh, yeah, you all know audio return channel, that means all audio you play on your TV screen in PCM. So you have to set it, of course, to PCM. Uh, if it doesn't uh, do it automatically, uh, just check uh, the setup menu that is set to PCM. But normally it will, uh, done, uh, will be done automatically. You can connect uh, the TV to the DNP, audio signal will get transferred to the network player, uh, HDMI, ARC and then uh, it will be outputted to the connected amplifier. 
The nice thing is, as said, uh, we have CEC uh, support as well, which means you can use your TV remote actually either to control the volume of the DNP, so means uh, it's a variable output, or if you have the fixed output connected of the DNP, you can control the volume of the amplifier. Let me show it uh, on some graphics here. So in this uh, setup, the audio is connected to the variable output. So you can see the green rectangle area. Uh, you take the uh, variable output of the DNP and connect it to the external uh, pre-amplifier input of the amplifier. And the yellow line is the control line, which actually lets the DNP talk to the amplifier. And it does it in this way that it says, OK, hey, I do get a uh, CEC signal. Uh, I'm now switching the uh, DNP to HDMI uh, amplifier. Please also switch to external uh, preamplifier input, and the volume signal will be then, um, and also powers on the amplifier, of course. Yeah, so all these commands will be just transferred from the DNP to the amplifier. And it works in a similar way if it's connected via the fixed output. Yeah, so now it's uh, the blue uh, area, so blue rectangle where you can see the fixed audio output is connected to the network input of the amplifier. And uh, if now the HDMI sends a CEC signal, uh, hi, I'm, I'm now TV sound, uh, please change the input. So the DMP will change the input to HDMI and the amplifier will change the input to network and all the volume control commands will be sent to the amplifier and the volume can be adjusted by the remote of the TV. So it's very easy integration of the product in a, in a TV environment. So that's actually what you can see here on, on one chart. Uh, I highlighted the uh, some of the current products, which are the PMA 1700, which I also hooked up here on, on display, the A110, uh, the uh, 1600 and 2500 as the four, let's say, key, target uh, amplifiers where I would say there's a high uh, chance to get the DMP2000 NE connected to. And you can see that uh, all of these amplifiers do support IR control. They do have this uh, port, this communication uh, line. They do the power sync, which means uh, automatically power on, power off, uh, depending on uh, uh, what you do, control with the uh, TV remote. And then it also changes automatically the input, as I explained here. Yeah? So if you have the fixed volume output, uh, it automatically changes the input to, to network. And if you have a variable output, it also can be controlled the external preamplifier input. Yeah? Except for the PMA 1600, because there was no external preamplifier input. But then, of course, you still have the possibility to uh, uh, connect it with the fixed level output. And all the other ways, uh, you can see for other uh, for the other products as well. Uh, so there's a high compatibility with uh, DMP 2000 to all the amplifiers we brought to the market since uh, 2020, since the last 10 years. Okay, having a quick look to the front panel. Um, as you see, a beautiful design, clean, large display. Uh, it's all aluminium uh, finish. Uh, we have a new logo uh, attached to the product for the Ultra AS32 processing. Um, we have the same sh uh, shape and depth of the product, uh, like the 1700 uh, amplifier and CD player. So it's a perfect match uh, for these products. If you stack them, if you put them side by side, uh, they all have the same depth. Looks pretty nice. We have the high quality feed, and of course a good phono uh, headphones uh, phono output stage. If we look to the rear, you already got a brief uh, look for the, let's say, digital connectivity, which is uh, the upper row, actually. And on the uh, uh, lower row, you see the fixed level and uh, variable output uh, connectors. One important point here, variable output goes from 0 to 100. And actually, if you increase it all the way up to 100, the output level is 60 dB higher than you would get it from the fixed level output. This is made to also be capable of uh, driving a wide variety of uh, power amplifiers. Yeah? Some have a lower gain, hence you will need to have a higher output from your uh, variable output. 
uh, so to really reach the maximum in volume. So that's also why our engineering really thought about uh, how to make it best working in the field with all different type of uh, solutions. What you of course also can do is just connect a pair of uh, active speakers to it. Yeah, also there you have your streamer, you have your analog output variable uh, uh, level, connect to an active speaker and you have your system done. Looking to the inside, uh, you see uh, it's not an empty box, it's actually pretty packed. Uh, there's no space left for any additional uh, circuitry. Um, let's just go uh, top left. Uh, you can see um, the digital connectivity board uh, together with the HDMI and the HERA streaming module, which is more or less centered uh, in the top. And then we have the power supply for the digital section. Uh, with this yeah, yellow bar, that's a little uh, transformer for the uh, switching mode power supply, which is just serving the uh, digital section. Then we have the two transformers, which are uh, set in the in the middle of the product, and these are actually turned uh, so turned each uh, to against each other by uh, 180 degrees. So we have a leakage cancellation, so we really to keep everything quite and clean. On the lower right corner, you will see the analog power supply, uh, then uh, followed by the uh, little um, extra board which has the AL32 processing. Then we come to the DA, uh, DA converters uh, area where you see uh, actually four uh, DA converters, which I'm going to show you uh, in a minute as well. And then we do have on top right the analog output stage. Uh, one thing to uh, mention uh, in addition is the, in the power transformers. We do have two of these because one is used just for the analog section and the second one is used just for the digital section. So also here a complete separation. But also that I'm going to show you here on the next screen. So we have the digital power with one power transformer, digital connectivity, digital processing, dock that's all served by one uh, uh, transformer. And then we have the analog power supply, one transformer, analog section, analog output stage. And uh, in the product itself, it looks like this. Yeah, uh, left to right power supply. And uh, what you can see uh, in, on the green PCB board are actually our digital isolators. Yeah, so um, we completely separate the digital sec section where we do have uh, yeah, high frequency switching noise, all kind of stuff on the ground level, for example, we completely separate to the analog area. So, and this is done by digital isolators. Um, there's no uh, physical connection between these two boards, just to keep everything clean and uh, free of distortion. So we really uh, do it to the extreme. Then we look to the uh, power supply for the digital section. Also here, very nicely de designed, uh, very clean, uh, very accurate, uh, all fully uh, symmetric. Uh, you see the main capacitors in the front um, and then with the power regulators on the heat sinks. That board here uh, shows you the Ultra AL32 processing. So on the board itself in the center, that's a powerful DSP which is doing all the uh, AL32 processing and what that is about, I'm, I'm going to show you now. Um, the ITER uh, AL32 processing is actually taking in the digital PCM signal and does uh, an, yeah, a bit extension, for example, from 16-bit to up to 32-bit uh, and uh, an, an upsampling in the frequency from 44.1 up to uh, 352. So if you input a 44.1 16-bit uh, digital signal, PCM signal, it will get upsampled to 352.8 32-bit resolution. By doing that, we can get much closer on the original audio signal, um, analog signal, uh, like it was before the digitalization in the recording studio. Yeah, so let's say analog recording, digitalized uh, for streaming or for putting it on a, a CD, uh, processed, uh, transferred, and then uh, before you go from digital back to analog, we do our Ultra AL32 processing, which gives us a refined audio signal again. 
and then uh, after the yeah processing the DA conversion takes happen and then we have a really clean close to original uh, analog audio signal so that's what uh, AS32 actually is doing refining the audio signal for a better audio experience once uh, yeah it passes the ultra uh, AS32 processing as said uh, you do all these uh, upsampling and bit extension after that the signal will be passed on to the DA converter normally you would be just fine having one stereo DA converter yeah? so uh, you can do the left and the right uh, signal we again on the DMP 2000 go to the extreme taking the same technology like we use for the DCD A110 the anniversary model and we do use not just one not just two but in total even four stereo DA converters and these are operated in double differential mode by that we really can improve uh, the overall performance reduce distortion lower the um, uh, noise level and get a higher dynamic after the DA conversion yeah uh, you see uh, actually yeah one uh, DA converter has two outputs for one channel we have two DA converters in total four outputs you can see on the top the four red lines that will all get together uh, from the differential signal it will be put together so that uh, um, noise can be cancelled out distortion can be cancelled out and you get the output signal for the right channel same is going to happen on the lower uh, uh, path with the blue arrow for the left channel and uh, that's actually how it's implemented in the product itself you can see uh, these yeah I, I put some numbers uh, uh, aside to it one two three four these are the DA conversers surrounded by uh, big capacitors uh, guaranteeing a clean power supply also here very closely attached to the DA converter um, when we do have a master clock design, uh, you know, um, for all these operations, you need a, a very nice stable uh, clock signal uh, so that all uh, operations actually do work in sync. Uh, the problem is uh, the, the longer the distance is, the, the clock signal has to travel within the product to the next chipset, like uh, here for the FPGA or the HEOS Netrule. There will be some uh, distortion. Uh, unencouragey on on the clock signal so we have to ensure that uh, especially in the last stage when the DA conversion happens that the face uh, or the the, the the crystal the clock is very stable and clean and that's why the uh, uh, crystals for the clock are very put very closely to the DA converter and then we do ensure that when we route the signal the clock signal through the product to the other devices that we get a minimum uh, jitter or, or, um, yeah, or distortion on the clock signal. However, if there's any uh, distortion happening on the way, we can compensate it again uh, in the DA conversion uh, field. So by that, we also improve the final result of the analog signal. Okay, and these are the two clocks. As you can see, um, they are, yeah, we actually have two clocks built in. One is for 44.1 kilohertz and the other one for 48 kilohertz uh, signals and they're multiple of. Uh, we do use two clocks because uh, we could also just use one clock, but then uh, we always would have um, a, a kind of mismatch and we will always have to, let's say, throw data away or have to make some interpolation uh, for the different clock signals. But uh, with um, yeah, having two clocks, we, we manage always to have the perfect clock signal, be it for a 44.1 and the multiple uh, signals like 88.2 uh, um, or 176.4 or of the 48 kilohertz signal, like, you know, uh, 96 kilohertz, 192 kilohertz, all these signals are available in the field and we do ensure that we always have the fitting crystal for it, fitting clock signal. Now let's go uh, after we yeah, have uh, done all the digital processing with the AS32 and the uh, double differential uh, DA conversion. Uh, we are now going to pass on the signal to the analog stage and the analog stage, uh, the, so the output stage, um, of course, uh, needs also a clean power. 
for the best audio quality and that's uh, what these pictures are over here. This board is holding yeah, the two main capacitors which are filtering uh, the power uh, to keep it really clean and these are especially made uh, for, for audio and they are produced by Suscon. And uh, on the heatsink, you see the power regulator. So this board on its own, it's only uh, feeding the analog stage. And uh, here you actually can see now the analog output stage. Uh, if we start on the top of the product, you can see all the capacitors, uh, which I showed you before, where in between the DA conversion sits. Uh, very much on the top, you can still see a bit of the AS32 board uh, with the FPGA uh, chipset on it. But after the DA converter, you can see these uh, copper foil uh, capacitors. That's actually where uh, we already are on the analog domain. Uh, so here the signal from the DA converters comes into the analog uh, output stage. Uh, with the uh, foil capacitors, um, we start in the filter stage actually. Now before we can really amplify the signal to output uh, it uh, from the terminals, we have to filter it to get rid of all high frequency noise, which still, uh, of course, occurs in the DA conversion. So we have to filter these out. And we do use these very special parts, these foil capacitors, uh, because they have a very nice characteristic for, for the sound, yeah, to keep it uh, clean and crisp and get uh, to get you really all the details without any harsh. Uh, in, in, in the sound in the upper frequency range. And then for the output stage, uh, also you can see again we have uh, selected components or even custom-made components made uh, for Denon. Um, so, and again it's fully uh, symmetrically layout. More selected components, it all comes together as explained in different uh, videos already. It's all about the, the right combination of parts to get uh, the, the good sounding Denon product. And then the characteristic we want to have is not about just applying the best components, the most expensive components, but it's about finding the right combination of parts. And then uh, for the headphone lovers, uh, as a standalone music streamer, of course, you can also uh, consider this uh, DNP 2000 NE. We also have a quite uh, good quality headphone stage uh, built in, uh, of course, with volume control. And you can see here as well, this headphone stage is uh, uh, built with discrete components. And we also have the possibility to change the gain yeah, from low, mid to high, depending on the impedance of the headphones connected. You can adjust it so that you always have a sufficient uh, volume level. If you look to uh, mechanical construction, because you know uh, all the boards uh, have to mount it somewhere and you don't want to have any outside distortion, to the sensitive uh, signal which is sent uh, on the boards. It should be very solid, it should be quiet, and that's uh, why we do build a very solid uh, main chassis. As you can see on the left picture, we have uh, uh, the main chassis, and uh, the yellow one uh, uh, plate is an extra bottom plate to make some, uh, the chassis more stiff, more heavy, less uh, vibration. And then in the same direction also there goes a high density food. As you can see with the inner construction, we minimize uh, the vibration which can be picked up by the food. Uh, so it's a, also um, a nice um, um, rubber attached to it, uh, giving additional damping so that uh, the whole area yeah, where the boards are mounted in the whole product is very solid and quiet. And then once uh, we have our audio signal uh, prepared, we want to give it uh, over to uh, a good quality uh, chinch cable. And for that, we also have high quality RCA terminals, which are ma machine brass. So also here, high quality, good contacts and uh, uh, um, reliability of a, a long time. All your highlights, just to summarize again, uh, discrete power supplies I talked about. Yeah, so we have a complete separation between digital power supply and analog power supply. Two power transformers, uh, which are uh, mounted in a league by, by 180 degree uh, uh, rotation, means um, it's a leakage cancellation uh, construction. Eliminate all kind of uh, interference or uh, uh, noise by that. 
Then we have, uh, for the digital signal, uh, the PCM signal, we have the Ultra AL32 processing yeah, for, for the upsampling and the bit extension. And then the four DA converters, four stereo DA converters configuration in the double uh, differential mode. Yeah, just to get rid of any kind of distortion and to improve the signal to noise ratio, which actually ends up in a higher dynamic, more details, more uh, um, resolution, high resolution. Then we are coming to the analog output stage. Also here, everything is fully discrete. And I showed you that we have a, a nice analog power supply uh, for a clean supply of uh, the voltage and the current. Uh, we do use uh, components made for audio or customized components to really tweak it to the best sound quality. Everything is symmetrically on the layout. Yeah, so that there's no differentiation, uh, uh, deviation from, from the left and the right channel. And it's all built into a solid construction uh, uh, cabinet yeah, for high reliability over the long run, but also uh, a very solid stiff cabinet to reduce any vibration. In the end, of course, if it all comes together, it should sound like a Denon product. Uh, and that is uh, vivid and spacious. And... Uh, Shinichi Yamochi uh, is our Denon sound master who takes care of uh, all of this uh, to really ensure that you will get a, uh, yeah, a real Denon uh, sound quality from this product. With it actually means it's lively, crispy, you get all the details uh, with pinpoint accuracy. It's direct and powerful, it really talks to you, it uh, engages you as a listener uh, into the music. Spacious and is uh, yeah all talking about the sound stage, which should be pretty wide, big, open sound stage with a lot of air in it, yeah, so that you really feel that uh, yeah it's filling the room and you get all the nice spacious uh, of a recording. So that's where Yamochi-san is taking care of. And uh, as mentioned before, the product is made in our uh, own factory in Japan. So you see on top left uh, the picture of the Denon factory in Shirakawa. And that's all uh, yeah, used for, for the highest quality of the product. And we can do, uh, let's say, special treatment, special circuitry, special components, especially in our Denon factory, because we have more flexibility than going to somewhere else outside of Japan. Uh, again, here are the pictures uh, of the systems. Uh, here the, in combination with the PMA1700 and the DCD1700, I show you the DMP2000NE, all in black. And you can see uh, that they do have all the same depths. So it's a nice, uh, nice uh, combination, a nice system. Of course, it's also available in premium silver, which looks really luxury uh, in this respect. Very elegant. Um, just to remind you on the PMA 1700, what is the feature set? Of course, it's uh, our um, two times 140 watt power amplifier or integrated amplifier, which features a nice uh, MMMC phono stage as well. And also has a duck mode, which means it has optical coaxial, but also USB duck. Uh, functionality, so USB-B, yeah? And it does come with uh, our ultra high current uh, single push-pull circuitry for the power amplifier. So that's a very nice um, uh, amplifier. And uh, I mentioned before with HDMI connectivity that you have the option to either connect the DMP to network input of the amplifier or the external pre-input, yeah? So this also featured here with the PMA 1700 NE. Just a quick summary here on the DCD or a reminder refresher. Uh, very nice, uh, high quality DCD player, also supporting our advanced AS32 processing for, for the upsampling of the audio signal, high quality DA converters, duck uh, master clock design. So, what uh, I explained to you on the DNP also counts, of course, here for the DCD 1700, a high quality DA conversion with a, high pre, a highly precise the, uh, duck master clock is very important for the performance. And then we do also have, uh, of course, the combination of the graphite silver system. Yeah, we already showed you uh, in, during the presentation uh, the system over here. I think Roland is going to 
switch over again the camera so you can enjoy it one more time. But you see also here, it's a very nice fit uh, with the combination in graphite silver. Okay, that's it from my side so far on the presentation, on the technical detail of the product. I did you, uh, gave you a summary in the end um, about the technical highlights. You will receive the presentation afterwards so you can uh, study and dig a bit deeper into it. Um, I just would like to stress again that the DNP 2000 NE, it's a very nice fit to a lot of products we already have in the market. Yeah, so with all the amplifiers and uh, yeah, hi-fi systems sold over decades, yeah, we now have a very premium solution to get network connectivity streaming capability to it. So uh, please keep that in mind when uh, thinking on how position, how to actually market this product. Uh, it's very nice and it's a very good solution. Okay, thank you so much for, for listening so far. Uh, I think we are now ready then to start the question and answers. Frederick, thank you, hello. Oliver. Yes, uh, there's a couple of questions that come in. Um, a very good question about uh, Ultra AL32 processing. Um, so Leonidas is asking the upsampling after AL32, Ultra AL32 to 1536 megahertz probably needs to get downsampled to accommodate for the maximum resolution of the DAC. Is that correct? The DAC we're using is a ES9018 K2M, you said, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I can see the specs online, if I'm not mistaken, is 384 kilohertz, 32 bit. So how does that work? Yeah. Um, let me quickly go back because uh, it's mentioned in here, I think. Yeah, as you can see um, on on the left side, you have the FPGA where the Ultra AL32 processing is going to happen. And you can see the split into seven, uh, six, eight kilohertz. Yeah, so we are actually, um, yeah, so we are going down from the 1.5 megahertz to half. Yeah, so that's correct. Okay, understood. Next question, we're still using USB-B, whereas a lot of people are starting to USB-C, but for a DAC input, I think USB-B is still the right connector. You can use an adapter, or is there a specific way to not use USB-C, any reason for not doing that? Um, I, I never, tr let's say, tried or compared USB-B to USB-C, and um, actually, I, I haven't seen uh, an external DA converter yet with the USB-C DAC. Uh, so I'm no, I'm, I haven't played with it. I can't really comment on on the difference in quality or the way the signal will get handled. Yeah, but the let's say the established standard actually connecting a computer to an uh, external DAC is a USB-B connectivity. Yes, and I have the same. I have a USB-C on my laptop, but then I'll go from USB-C to USB-B to go inside mm -hmm. the DAC uh, of, in this case, the KR Ruby that sits behind me. Uh, but I have not heard any difference whether you use the adapter or not. So for mm -hmm. me, I don't think it's an issue. It's probably yeah, a lot of people are using USB-C now, but in the end, USB-B for DAC input is still the proper connector, the proprietary connector so far. Right. Now, speaking of USB connectors, the USB-A port on the front, I guess it's easy to put a USB thumb drive in there with files. What about a USB drive? Any particular formatting, any particular limit? Mm, it does support both formatting, so uh, FAT as well as NTFS. So that's uh, both supported. Um, I would be careful uh, with the size. Uh, of course, um, it does support big USB drives as well, but uh, um, the indexing takes, of course, a bit longer if there are too many files on it. So uh, I would recommend also the operation. Um, I think it's nicer to use, a, let's say, a, connect, a connected computer via USB B dock or via the, uh, um, a NAS drive and you stream it directly via the network connectivity if you have big uh, libraries. 
than having a USB-A drive uh, connected to the front. Understood. Uh, a lot of questions about Tidal. Tidal Connect functionality, is that on the roadmap? It's on the roadmap and uh, we are getting closer, but I don't have a date yet. Yes, and there was a similar question in German, if it's possible to play the Tidal Masters uh, slash MQA using the HEOS chip. I think it's not becoming an issue anymore. Maybe you can elaborate a bit further. Yeah, let's, let's say we, we paused now the implementation of MQA because uh, I think most of you heard about uh, that they are slightly in trouble. And we first will have to see uh, how, let's say, the further development is going uh, on MQA. And um, yeah, at the moment, we don't know. Yeah, What we heard is that Tidal most likely is going to, in addition to MQA, are also going to offer Flux HD in, in the future. Yeah, so, yeah. but uh, time will tell us. Exactly. And then uh, similar to that is Rune level. I think currently it's Rune certified like most of mm -hmm. our products. So I understand that you can use AirPlay as a protocol to stream from the Rune core directly mm -hmm. and use the, the DMP2000 as an endpoint. But if you're using USB, you can go full high resolution. So you don't have to use, you don't have the limitations of AirPlay truncating it down to 44.116 bit. Is that right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. So you have, um, the, the products are right now Rune tested which means you can transmit uh, via, via AirPlay. Uh, but uh, the way you showed as well is uh, running um, Rune on your computer and then using the USB dock functionality to get the full potential of Rune. Okay, good question from Atesh. If you would compare the DA of a DCD1700 and a DNP2000, you would use a DNT2000 as a DA converter and then the DCD mm -hmm. as a transport. Which one of the two devices DAC would be giving you the better uh, <laughs> performance or sound quality? It's again a matter of taste, isn't it? Give it a try. That's uh, all I can comment, yeah. So uh, yeah. both devices are built to a high standard. And it, I think, I don't expect big deviation between these two, yeah. Uh, so. Uh, it's a matter of taste, exactly. Good, uh, you mentioned the feet, the high density feet. Uh, what type of material is used? Because somebody suggested if we are using metal feet, would that not be more solid? But it's not recommended to use metal material. So there's a reason why we're using high density. Yeah, if, if you make metal, you have to make it, uh, um, really solid, uh, or like we do on, on the A110 product, for example, we have die cast uh, feet. Yeah, these are very heavy and uh, very uh, uh, steady. Yeah, so um, that of course is a different game in sound. Uh, but using this feet on the DMP2000 and E would bring us in some, some other trouble because these feet are very expensive. Hence, uh, either if we want to keep the same price tag, we have to lower the quality of the components inside, uh, or we have to bring up the price just to add the feet. So it's always uh, a balance we have to find. Uh, what is the, the right price tag for a product in the market, and where are we going to spend the money? Of course, the die-cast feet would help to further improve the product quality. However, uh, it's also more costly. So it's always a balance. We have made very good experience with these high density feet, uh, taking a lot of these uh, vibration and um, yeah, uh, improving the audio performance to a good level. And then uh, spending, let's say, more money internally with the components, as you have seen, for example, the, the copper foil uh, capacitors or the, the Denon custom-made uh, Elcos. So these are quite expensive. And also what you have seen, uh, the two separate power supplies uh, for the digital area and for the analog area. These are more efficient than what we would get by a more costly uh, die cast feed. So that's where we have to always find the right balance of components to use and where to spend the money. 
Yes, and a high density composite polymer does pretty much the same job. It's all about the law of diminishing returns as well. So great. To the next question about headphone outputs. So obviously it's a 6.3 standard headphone output for stereo. There are questions if we are, or that's not like a feature request, would we be able to include balanced headphone outputs with the four pins rather than the three pins? So they have their separate grounds. Balanced yeah. headphones for audio files. Sure, yeah, of course we can do everything, uh, but again, the same story. Uh, it's much more costly to implement it uh, with a balanced output because also the internal circuitry needs to be, let's say, double, yeah, to really have a double, uh, um, the balanced output. And um, then again, the, the number of people using really the balanced output to the standard output, uh, the ratio I would guess it's uh, somewhere 20% balance, 80% standard. So we focus more on the 80% uh, to really uh, make this one uh, in, on a very good level. Um, for the really specialists who want to use the balanced output, they will have to find a different solution with an external uh, headphone amplifier. Yeah, and totally understand, I mean, a 6.3 is a, is an unbalanced output. So if you want to change the connector, that's one thing, but that's not going to help you because you need a separate circuit to get the full effect exactly. of balanced output, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, uh, maybe one more and just pops into my mind talking about headphone. Uh, I mentioned that we of course have Bluetooth uh, built in for, for streaming, but also uh, we do it the other way around. So headphone uh, via Bluetooth transmission. So you can connect your uh, Bluetooth headphones directly to the unit without running any wire. The question about direct live, is that usable with this stereo setup? No. Yeah, so in direct capability, we only apply or um, feature on the AV receivers for the Mighty Channel setup. Okay, let's have a look. Is it possible to integrate Apple Music with the HEOS app? If not, are there any plans to do so? That's again one of those recurring questions. Exactly, yeah. So, uh, of course, we would love to do so, but uh, it's, let's say, not possible at the moment. The only way you can do it uh, now is that you choose, uh, use AirPlay to stream directly then from your smart device to the DMP. Yeah, and then again, a question about Rune Ready without the USB. Yes, that is still mm -hmm. on the roadmap. We still mm -hmm. have all our devices currently Rune tested, and we are moving forward uh, to get all the devices certified as Rune Ready. This is a functionality that will be implemented in the HEOS chip, so not just limited to this particular product, but to all products that have HEOS built in. Exactly, yeah. Uh, Bluetooth headphones, possible to attach or not? Yes, we have answered that. We have Bluetooth mm -hmm. transmission. Do you expect comeback of CDs similar to vinyls? Um, I, uh, I hope so, because we're trying to sell our products, yeah. CD players. Yeah. What's your take so on we that? We'll have to look into the, our glass bowl to answer this question. Um, uh, let me say that uh, CD will not die. Yeah, it's not like a cassette which will just completely disappear um, because there are so many, let's say, good music available on CD and the way you listen to a CD is completely different again to uh, the way you listen to streaming music. So um, I'm pretty sure that we will continue with CD for a long, long time. Excellent. We're right on time. I think we finished all the questions. So thanks for your answers. Yeah. Very valuable. Thank you very much, Frederick, for, for asking. Or thank you very much for uh, to all the people online uh, asking the question and paying some attention to my presentation here and joining the training, the webinar. I hope you could get uh, could get some good information, helpful information to, to get a better understanding of the product. The, better understanding of the valid, uh, value of the product and where it sits into our hi-fi portfolio and where it can be combined with. Um, yeah, thank you again to the team over here and uh, thank you, Frederick, for being my uh, question and answer man. And uh, yeah, thank you very much again and uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you, bye-bye.
Take care. Bye. Bye.